As a performance testing expert, I have handed out plenty of bad news to contractors who tried really hard to meet some quantifiable performance goals and then found out when I ran the test that they didn't actually meet the mark and that they still had work to do. So I'm about to show you me getting my feelings hurt just like those contractors. Um, my hero, Jeff Hebner, geotechnical engineer from Padstone here in Atlanta, um, offered very generously to come back out and test the dirt where we were about to pour our footings. And so um, it's hard to receive bad news, but I just want to reiterate that Jeff is the good guy for giving me the information. And also, you do it. You keep doing the work because it's worth it. And if you don't believe that, then don't do it. But if you're a second time homeowner and you know what a pain it can be when your house shifts or when things aren't the way that you want them or when it's got a permanent problem that you're never gonna be able to fix, it's designed in, that is way worse. So I know that, some of you know that. For those of you who don't, you will find out. So we're doing this the right way, the $1 fix versus the $10 uh, remediation during construction versus the hundred times as expensive fix once we're done. Um, so check out what's about to happen when you start digging into how high performance the pad that you're building your house on actually is. Looking good, right? Yeah. All right. Got my brown shirt, got my geotechnical engineer. It's more important. So Jeff is back. Uh, and he's going to look at the state of our forms. So because we are about to pour concrete and this is the last minute when anything that is on his report, which took a long time to compile and do all this stuff for, if we don't follow the directions at the last minute here, it's just a piece of paper, right? It's just like what I do, like performance. Essentially. Yeah, like I could give you a, a heat load calculation, but if you're not actually gonna build the house the way that we said, it doesn't matter what the design stuff is. It's like what actually happens on the day of. So that's why I got like this. Comes out with his high-tech tool. Show him your tool. High-tech. Yep, okay. That was, you have to buy that from an engineering store. Yeah, they have an engineering bookstore it, for all engineers. <laughs> okay, so show us what we're doing here. Well, essentially, Corbett did do things the right way. He placed a lot of fill in here, and we talked through the whole process when he was putting it in, so he's compacted it in layers, and, and everything was great. But it's like having a recipe to bake a cake. If you got the perfect recipe, but you eliminate some ingredients, you have a problem. So, similar thing here. Things were done, but that's been a few weeks. We've had some weather conditions, so before Which we happens, actually... that weather? God it does happen. It. it happens regularly. So before we actually put concrete and cover this up so that we can't deal with it later, we're going to take one last minute, look at the soils at bearing level beneath what will be the foundations and just make sure that uh, what we put in so diligently or that you put in so diligently mm -hmm. is representative of what the home's going to actually sit on. So cool. That's what we're going to do right now. Awesome. Very technical procedure. Yeah. <laughs> You're putting how firm, many pounds per stratum? How many psi are you putting on that? Well, I'm not a heavy guy, but this is a pretty sharp point, so uh -huh. the pressure is decent. Now back here, it was dry. Over there specifically, it didn't get wet at all because we tarped over this whole thing. Okay, take my hat off again because this time it's for bad news. And Do I my need job. Mine off? You don't need to take yours off. You're the consultant. Mine's you, on. You're, yeah, your job is to tell the truth all the time. So, the reason you bring in a third party verifier is because, and Jeff offered this morning, like, hey, do you want me to come out there and look? And I was like, part of me thought, I don't want to know. But part of me said, This is a construction site, just to remind everyone. <laughs> uh, that having a third party come out and look at it is important. And what we found is what? Well, we found some soft soils directly beneath where the footings are going to be constructed. So the material was put in and, and compacted well, but we've had the weather that we talked about and some activity with equipment and people just walking, walking around uh, that has softened the upper 8 to 12 inches of soil directly beneath the footing or where the footing will go and that material is pretty soft and compressible. 
Um, and so, to be honest, before you get concrete into the trench, and that's your footing, and it's covered and done, it's so much easier and cost effective to just uh, reduce that risk by taking out the very soft soil and replacing it with something else, like right. stone or something fairly incompressible. Right. So that's engineer speak for the top 8 to 10, 12 inches is bad. We need to take it out with a shovel. Like that. Um, so we're just going to go around the entire strip footing. I've got my, my help here and we're gonna um, we're gonna do this on a nice dry day take out the soil put down the rocks that we've got standing over there. You can see them. and then we can put concrete on top of that so I'm gonna cancel my inspection for tomorrow which means we're pushed back again another week probably for it to wait to dry out because it's supposed to rain on Friday or Saturday again um, and this is just the life man this is living it but when we're done Jeff's point is the house will not settle and the reason this is also important is because over there the house will sit on rock. That's not gonna move. This stuff, if this all moves and that doesn't move, my house is out of true and it's gonna start cracking and weird stuff is gonna happen and now it's not structurally stable anymore. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you will be calling me in six to 12 months and saying, why are my doors and windows not opening like they should and what is this little crack? And then we can fix it, but it's gonna be very expensive. And I'm paying expert witness fees instead of just consultant fees at that point, which are yeah, higher, right? We'll still be friends at that point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much for coming out again. Absolutely. All right, you guys, uh, comment, like, don't like, tune in next time.